Okay, praise him. All right, we're getting ready to get started on our Sabbath class. Uh, we're going to have uh, the reading of the Ten Commandments. Then Sister Tammy, open up in prayer. And I'm going to come back up and we're going to get started in the class for today. Amen. 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 The Ten Commandments, also known as the Voice, Deuteronomy 4 and 12, the Covenant, Exodus 34 and 28, the Faith, Romans 10 and 17, the Law of Love, Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 6, and Deuteronomy 4, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, nor thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all of them that is and all of and all that in them is, and resteth the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the seventh day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for this day, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, that you are worthy of all the praise, the honor, and the glory. Lord, we just give you, Lord God, the first fruit of our lips, oh God. And we just ask, God, that you will open up, oh Father God, the eyes of our understanding, that we, oh Father God, may understand your word, oh Father God, and eat of your word. We ask that you bless the apostle, Lord God, as he come forth, oh God, to deliver the message, oh God, that you have placed on his heart, Father. And God, we thank you for everyone that will be tuning in, oh Father God. The Lord, you give us ears to hear and hearts to receive what the Spirit will say to the church on today. We give you all honor, praise, and glory in the issues. Amen. 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 All right. Now let's do just a little housekeeping for social media. I want to read my disclaimer and fair use notice and uh, one other thing, and then we'll try to get to the lesson for the day. Okay. Uh, my disclaimer the love for all people. The reason I like to read this is because sometimes I deal with some touchy stuff. Amen. So I need people to know where we stand or where I stand. All right. Greetings to everyone in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, a.k.a. Jesus, the Christ, the Son of the living God. I am a brother Curtis Lewis, also known on Facebook and YouTube as Apostle Curtis Lewis. I am a born again, Messianic Israelite follower of Christ and the way as described in the scriptures. I believe the almighty God is awakening a remnant out of all nations of the true scattered house of Israel in fulfillment of the prophecy of Ezekiel concerning the scattered dry bones according to Ezekiel chapter 37. I believe in these last days that the most high God is awakening for the most part the so-called African-American Negro slave descendants to their true identity and their natural lineage to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I believe also there is an awakening of many Gentile believers to the same truth and that 
we all will be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air at his return. It is my sincere desire and prayer that through the teaching of the word today and with the help of the Holy Spirit that we all can be brought to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, yeah. unto the measure and the fullness and the statue of Christ and to the love of the Heavenly Father. Okay. Here is a fair use notice because sometimes I make quotes from other authors and I want to make sure I read this fair use um, notice and because I've come to realize this is, this is very important going forward. Mm -hmm. Okay, fair use notice. Due to the so social nature of this site, this channel may use uh, may make use of copyrighted material, the use of which has not always been specifically authorized by the copyright owner. Its application constitute a fair use of any such copyrighted material as provided for in Section 107 of the U.S. Copyright Law. In accordance with the Title 17 U. SC section 107 the material on this channel is offered publicly and without profit to the users of the internet for comment and non-profit educational informational purposes the following work is intended to be shared is free and only for educational purposes okay all right, let me do one other thing before we get into the lesson. I don't know if any of y'all uh, saw some comments. Well, actually, one main comment on Facebook. But I want to address. I've already addressed it, but I'm going to address it publicly because every now and then we have people come across this site, and some of them have problem with the name of Jesus. And I understand where they're coming from, but this is not their house. <laughs> Some of them have a problem with my, well, actually just one person, two people have a problem with my head covering. <laughs> I like my head covering. I'm not going to take it off. And if somebody have a problem with it, maybe they need to find another Facebook page because it's not the one for you. So somebody made the comment, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4, it says, Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoring his head. Now, if you read, if you take some time and read what Apostle Paul is talking about, you will quickly find out that you got that out of context. Because if you keep reading and go down to verse 16, here's what Paul said to sum up everything he just got through saying. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 16. But if any man seem to be contentious by head covering, we have no such customs, neither the churches of God. No. So the sum total of what Paul was saying about head covering, we don't deal with that custom in the churches of God. Now, if you want to deal with it in your church or in your religion, help yourself. But in this ministry, we have the liberty of the spirit, and we go strictly by what the word Amen. says. Amen. 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 All right, so we got that straight. All right, today... Um, I don't know if I have a message. I think uh, I want to kind of entitle this uh, the history of what we call the church in the New Testament. I want to look back at the history of the church. Uh, in the New Testament, we call it the church. But where in the world did the church uh, that was mentioned in the New Testament come from? Now, we're going to deal with some of the things we talked about last time, you know, how the headquarters was in Jerusalem, then to Antioch, and then to Rome. We'll get to that in a few minutes, but uh, in the New Testament, when Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my church. Mm -hmm. Okay, what is the history of what the New Testament called the church? Okay. Anybody know? Where did that come from? What is the? What was the history of it? Where did it originate from? 
it started in the wilderness, okay? And it was the house of Israel. And it's also called the household of faith. Peter called it the household of faith. When he said uh, judgment starts first at the household of faith, at the house of God, okay? So the house of God, the house of Israel, and in the book of Acts, it was called the church in the wilderness. So the idea of church in the New Testament, the, the idea in the origin is traced back to the wilderness. It was a group of people, the most high called out of Egypt, brought them to the mountain of Sinai, made a covenant with them, and gave them his mind, his heart, his laws, and his way of life. That's where it started from, okay? And we come over in the New Testament, and then we know there was a temple in Jerusalem that we call the church, and we know what happened to that church. Anybody know what happened based on what we've already discussed? Hmm? Okay, anybody know what happened to the church in Jerusalem or the temple? It was destroyed in 70 AD. But before it was destroyed, if you read the book of Acts, the Bible says a persecution came upon that church. And it was so much persecution upon on that church. And keep in mind that church as Israel. That was Israel, Israelites. Okay, the same descendants from the wilderness, from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's what we call that temple in Jerusalem or that church. And so there came a great persecution upon those people, and we still partake in some of that persecution. We are the people, because we're the most persecuted peoples in the earth. So we kind of like, like at the end of all of this persecution now. But that persecution started in Jerusalem, and they scattered and went everywhere. And eventually, when that temple was torn down, uh, you had another powerful church in the scripture, and we know the name of it now, right? Antioch. Yeah, Antioch. And so Antioch was the second most powerful uh, assembly in the scriptures. And the Bible said that they was first called Christians at Antioch. Now, I don't think it was the apostles that did that. They was called Christians. It wasn't the apostles that put that labor on themselves. They was called this because they saw these peoples apparently following Christ and doing what he did. So the Bible said it was in Antioch where they were called Christians. Okay, and somebody just made it a religion, a, Christ, a Christianity religion. But really and truly, uh, the household of God and the household of faith was not a religion. It was not designed to be what we see today that we call religions and denominations and churches. It was an assembly that the Most High called to a mountain, made a covenant with them, and entered into a marriage covenant with them and gave him his mind, gave them his mind and his heart and through his laws. And it was only ten laws. And the Bible said he gave ten commandments, added no more. Didn't add no more. Didn't add no more until they broke those ten laws, and then he started adding a schoolmaster laws. Okay? So now when we come over in the New Testament after that Jerusalem church is destroyed, now you got Antioch. Uh, and the Bible said it was the Hebrews, it was the Israelites there in Antioch who was the preachers and the teachers and the prophets that was teaching the people. But then in Antioch, it was a multitude of Gentiles that came in, okay? And we know according to Genesis chapter 10, verse 2 through 5, who the Gentiles are. The Bible said that Japheth, some people say Japheth, uh, his descendants was called in the beginning of the Bible, the Isles of the Gentiles. So they was named Gentiles. So in Antioch, there was a multitude of Gentiles that came in or a multitude of white folks that came in or a multitude of Europeans that came in Antioch. And all of a sudden, you had a person, a Gentile, a European by the name of Constantine. 
How did I do on that that time? <laughs> I've been practicing. <laughs> Constantine came in and moved. He didn't necessarily move the church per se. He moved that. He moved that European movement. That's what I'm gonna say. He moved it to Rome, and that's where we get the Roman Catholic Church. Now, this is history. This is Bible history. And this is historical facts. Okay, and when the church, so-called church, got to Rome, that's where all the corruption came in. Because as long as those apostles was in control of the household of faith, as long as those Hebrews was in control of what God had delivered to the saints, it, wouldn't, it wasn't perverted. They wouldn't let nothing in. They dealt with everything. And Jude, when you read the book of Jude, Jude said, contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. The saints was the household of Israel. It was the Israelites. Now, now the, the Gentiles are able to become, it, become saints because the Bible said they become it saints. How do you become a saint? You have to enter into the covenant that these Hebrews had entered into. That's how you become engrafted in. But the saints in the Old Testament was known as the children of Israel because they were the one chosen by God. So, uh, as I said, this, this Gentile took that movement or took predominantly these Europeans to Rome and made it headquarters and perverted this book. And later on we have Another guy by what is what is his name? See if y'all remember church history that came along and uh, Martin rejected Martin Luther, not Martin Luther King. Martin Luther. Martin Luther was a Gentile, as I said before, a European, a descendant of Japheth, and he uh, disagreed with the Catholic Church, and he became the father. Of all the denominations, of all the other churches, because it's, he protested, and this is where we have the Protestant churches. And so this awesome assembly that the Most High himself called and established have went through a progression, and all of a sudden, somebody else got the public narrative of what church is, and it's called the Gentile. They took over what is called the church. And now when we look around hundreds of years later, when you said church, you're like, well, which one? You don't even know which one is right. You don't even know what doctrine is right. And they got in Christianity over, what, thirty to 40,000 denominations. That's just in Christianity. And you got probably just as many doctrines. So this thing is a mess. Amen. So now we live in a time where you hear a lot of people talking about, I'm Israel. I'm a descendant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Somebody, uh, get, get Isaiah 44, verse 5. Sister Tammy, I'm going to read that. And I just kind of felt like going back over the history, how we got to where we are now, and why it's important now to come back to the house of Israel. Why are people waking up calling themselves Israelites now? What is going on? Now keep in mind, there is a genuine move of God happening right before our face. Not just here at this little local assembly. It's happening all over the world. And anytime the Most High is moving, Satan is also moving too. So I said that to say this, that everyone that's identified with Israelites is not painting the right picture of what this thing ought to be. Because they got a lot of them that's confused themselves. And some of them that's waking up are truly bloodline Israelites. But Israel have always had rebels among them. Always. They always had people with issues. So, you, so you're not going to have a a movement of the Israelites coming back on the scene, true Israelites, not these people over in the Middle East playing like they the bloodline Israelites and these people come from uh, Ukraine. 
People that don't have a drop of blood at all uh, of shim in them and trying to play like they the true people of the Bible. Got America and all these nations sending them billions of dollars and been getting billions of dollars for over 74 years. Because hmm. uh, the state of Israel been established, I think, 70, 74 years, somewhere, give or take. And so they're getting billions of dollars playing like they the real people. And all of a sudden, the true bloodline people wake it up. But in the midst of this awakening, there's a lot of stuff that will turn you off if you're not careful. Yeah. But we can't focus on the turn off stuff. We got to focus on the stuff the Father is doing because we got to get back to the original words of the Father that he gave to the original people that he put in charge of this book. And so we're in a movement now. We're coming back to that movement. Okay, read that verse, Sister Tammy. Isaiah 44 and 5. Uh-huh. Once you'll say, I am the Lord. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, back up and start at verse 1 and come down to verse uh, 5. Because I want to kind of uh, interject some things as you read. Yet now hear, mm -hmm. O Jacob, my servant. O Jacob, my servant. So he's talking about uh, the father Jacob. But keep in mind... The time this scripture is being written, Jacob himself physically is dead. So he's talking about Jacob's descendants. Jacob and Jacob's descendants. Come on. And Israel. And Israel. See, he's telling you Israel. All right. Whom I have chosen. So he chose who? Israel. Now he chose uh, uh, Constantine. Israel. He, he chose uh, the Roman Catholic Church. Israel. He chose Israel. That's good. Israel. And that there are people preaching this Bible, but they're not telling the truth about the things that I'm bringing out right here. And people don't need to sit in church another day without being educated about this book. Come on. Come on. Thus said the Lord that made thee, uh -huh. and formed thee from the womb, okay. which will help thee. Fear not, O Jacob. Fear not, O Jacob. My servant. Okay, Jacob is the servant. And thou, just... Jeshurun. Jeshurun. That's another word for Israel. The people of Israel. Okay, so he said, Jeshurun, whom I chose. And who did God choose? Jeshurun. Who did God choose? Israel. Come on. For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty. Okay, so he's going to pour water upon him that is thirsty. And floods upon And water him. is kind of like a refreshing. And you know when you're on a hot, hot summer day, what is the best thing you can get? A good cold glass of water. So what the prophet is saying, that there going to come a time when the Gentiles, in their time, they're going to come in and for a season, God's going to allow the Gentiles to take the narrative and, and hijack everything and, and then to do what? To make the Hebrews jealous. Amen? And so they're going to come in and hijack everything, and Israel going to kind of go in the background. Yeah. And so whenever we come out 922, this is all y'all talking about, Israel, Israel, Israel. Well, if you don't like Israel, put your Bible down, because it's all about Israel. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on. He's pouring water upon people now. He's pouring water upon SCM. He's pouring water upon Apostle Lewis. Amen. And that's why my message don't sound like the Protestant message no more. Amen. Come on. And floods upon the dry ground. Floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed. He's pouring his spirit upon who? Thy seed. Upon whose seed? Israelite, the Israelite, the true Israelites of this book, the Bible says that he's going to pour water upon them. And, not, and you think, I'll tell you what, you're going to start hearing more people claim Israel that's really Israel. I'm not talking about claiming and you're not. I'm not talking about faking it till you make it. I'm talking about a many people waking up saying, we're Israel. We're the chosen people. Amen. Come on. And that they shall spring up. They're going to spring up. As among the grass. As among the grass. See the, see the Protestant churches and the Roman Catholic movement, there's a bunch of grass. <laughs> but all of a sudden, something's springing up among all that grass. Come on. As willows by the water courses. Come on. One shall say. What? They're going to spring up and what they're going to start saying? I am the Lord. I'm the Lord. I belong to the Lord. I've been born again. And another shall call himself. 
Another going to call himself by the name of Jacob. By the name of Jacob. And another shall subscribe. Another shall subscribe with his hand unto the Lord. Come on. And surname. And surname himself by the name of Israel. Why in the world? Tammy, come here for a minute. Come up, come up here for a minute. I want them to see this on Facebook. Why in the world I got on my heart shirt today? But usually I have on Israel shirt. Why in the world people walking around with Israel all on their shirt? What is going on? This stuff don't supposed to be happening in no 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 Protestant movement. What you doing? You surnaming yourself. You you live in prophecy by having that shirt on. You're inside a prophecy. We got prophecy happening right before our eyes. We get it, but a lot of people don't get it. But the Most High is pouring water out on people. And they rise it up. Black people all over the world rise it up. Realize they don't lie to us. I like uh, I like uh, Stephen Darby message. They jacked us. They jacked us. Hallelujah. But we come back to get our bread back. We come back to get our book back. Because we was given the oracles of God. Hallelujah. Let me calm down. I must be excited because Pastor David is in here. Glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, there's a revival. There's a move. There's a restoration of Israel. Why? Because the Most High is bringing Israel back to the surface to take back what the Gentiles stole from us. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Now, a Gentile can be saved. A European can be saved. A European can make it into the kingdom. But the Most High did not give the Europeans the keys to the kingdom. The keys to the kingdom was given to Hebrews. Was given to, let me say it like this, black people. That's what they call us, so I got to use it too. These Hebrews of the scripture were black people. Peoples of color. And those that don't like it just don't like the book. Because they're coming back on the surface now. They're coming back up front now. To reclaim their bread. So let's look at uh, a few things. And uh, I want to read this again. And I read it, I think, last week or week before last. So, <clears throat> all right. The Israelites was the original keepers of the household of faith. Located in Jerusalem. When Jerusalem was scattered, the next main assembly was Antioch. Turn that out back on because I think I turned it off. Was Antioch which was populated by Gentiles, which are Europeans. Sometime later, a Gentile came in and moved the Gentile movement to Rome. That Gentile, of course, was Constantine. And made it the headquarters, made Rome the headquarters. Rome is where everything got perverted. And it was so perverted that Martin Luther rebelled and started what we now know to be the Protestant movement. And we are now in a movement where God is bringing everything back to the original keepers who was given the keys in the first place, and that's Hebrews, uh, Negroes, uh, black people, whatever you want to call them. And even though a lot of people may reject this, they are rejecting the very Bible they hold it in their hand. Because historical facts show who the people were. Yeah. And uh, I watched an um, interview with Dr. Michael Brown. I don't know if y'all know Dr. Michael Brown. He's a white Jewish man. And they believe that they are the people. But he had an interview with the, this black man. And this black man took him to school. <laughs> I'm serious. He took him to school. And y'all need to Y'all need to probably watch that when you get a chance, and I can send it to you, Tammy, you can send it out. Okay. And it was just done about five months ago. And come to find out that this man is connected with hundreds of black people that have been in this country for years that nobody I've ever heard about. Way back in the 19th, I'm not talking about the Hebrew Israelite camps. I'm talking about black people who've been knowing what we now know way back in the 20s. Wow. And they still here in America. All over the world. Got rabbis, boards, and everything. Got synagogues. They were the one taught those white people in the Middle East. 
We didn't know that. Hallelujah. But now we're learning that. So it's time out for sitting in church, playing this Protestant church thing, and get back to what church really was. Amen. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, Glory to God. Okay, next thing I want to look at. According to the scriptures, in the last days, right before Jesus returned, there will be a revival and a renewal of the bloodline Israelites. We in that movement. We in that movement. That's what's happening. Hallelujah. Okay, next thing. No one, I said this a couple of weeks ago, I'm going to say it again. I'm going to go through some scriptures. Because everybody think, oh, just receive Messiah. You're going to make it in. If it's true, Messiah is the door. But Messiah himself said, if you don't like my people, you don't like me and you can't live in my kingdom. He said that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> huh? You can't get around not liking Israel. And all you people that don't like this Israel teaching, you putting yourself out of the kingdom. Mm. Come on. There's a... I don't know. that People like to say it's not the people, it's the land. Right. That, that, how ridiculous. It the is. land is important. In fact, let me, I think I got a scripture here I'm going to read. The land is important, but if I had to guess, what's more important, the land or the people? The people. Mm -hmm. What is the land without a people? Deuteronomy 32, verse 43. Listen to this right here. And I'm glad you brought that up. Now, if you, if you read this in context, he's talking about what he's going to do whenever he comes in the day of the Lord and he judge everybody on the earth for what they did to his people that were scattered all around the world. So this verse in context is talking about him one day coming to judge everybody that judged Israel. So I'm not making this up. But then when he get to verse 43, he said, Rejoice, O you nations, with his people. All you nations on the planet. When the people of God start rising up and realizing who they are, y'all took our heritage, took our names, took our land, took us from our land, never paid us reparation, but now we in your land waking up. Mm. Come on. Come on. So what all you nations need to be doing is you better start rejoicing with Israel or he going to take your candlestick. Wow. So that's what this verse talking about. It's in your Bible. Been there for years, but preachers ain't preaching on this. Yeah. It says, rejoice, O you nations, with his people. For he will avenge the blood of his servants. He's going to avenge every time I alligate any one of them. <laughs> He's going to pay the nations back every time they made them work and build their nations and didn't wow. pay them. Come on. I tell y'all this is what this book says. Oh. But he's telling them right now, nation, this is your way out. Repent and start rejoicing with his people. Yeah. But if you don't want to receive this message, if you don't want to receive this teaching, then you got a judgment coming. Nations. Come on. He said, rejoice, O you nations, with his people, for he will avenge the blood of his servants and will render vengeance to his adversaries and will be merciful to his land and to his people. The land, he will be merciful to the land and the people. So you, if you if you want to put emphasis on the land and overlook the people, those two don't add up. You got to give honor to the land and the people. So everybody want to pay thousands to go to Israel and Israel in your nations. Scattered in your nations, in your ghettos. <laughs> Glory to God. And there's another people over there playing like they us. And the Bible said everybody that burdened themselves with that land, the Bible said God going to cut them in pieces. Mm. Woo, glory to God. This book is alive because it's alive in my soul. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> so that's good. So they want to put emphasis on the land. You can't separate the land from the people. Because God has fought them together. Amen. And why is that land holy? Why is that land called holy? That's where he's going to put New Jerusalem. That's where we're going to dwell from. But watch this. When he 
when Moses saw him in that burning bush, what did he tell Moses? Take off your shoes. Why? Why is it holy? The most holy stepped on it. <laughs> Wherever he stepped on it, become holy. Hallelujah. And it's going to be holy again. He's going to step back there and be seen again. He said, the Bible said he, when Israel rebelled against him, the Bible said he left and went to his place. And he said, until they acknowledge their transgression, y'all ain't going to see me. You may sense my spirit, but you ain't going to see me. But now that Israel waking up, he getting ready to come out of his chamber. <laughs> Hallelujah. These scholars not preaching this Bible right because they don't know this Bible. All right, you, let's get back to where I was. Where, where was I? My wife kind of threw me off there. That was good. That was good there, though. Okay, so no one, here, here, here's, here's where I'm going. No one, listen to me now, listen to me on Facebook and YouTube. No one will make it into the millennial kingdom of Christ. No one, according to the Bible. I ain't make this up. No one will make it into the millennial kingdom of Christ if they mistreat, hate, reject, or curse Christ's people. Okay. You say, Christ is my Savior. You need him. He is the Savior. He is the door. But Christ said, what you did to them, you did to me. And we have biblical records where Christ sent people to eternal fire and he said curse into eternal fire for what you did to them my brethren and, that, and I heard somebody said, teach this the other day and I said glory to God that's confirmation they said he wasn't talking about his followers there he was talking about his bloodline people that word brethren in the Greek means brother by womb Christ is talking about his descendants, his, his, the, the one he descended from. He said, Christ, the Lord of the kingdom, he said, what you do to them, you do to me. So, no one, this is why people are going to miss the move of God, because in this Protestant movement and in, in this Catholic movement that's been going on for years, when they start hearing teaching like this, it's hard for them to digest it. But, but it's sitting right in their Bible, just like it's in my Bible. And so this is how people are going to miss the kingdom because they can't digest what the king said in this book. He said this. I didn't write this. Hallelujah. Now, let me see where else I want to go. Hallelujah. I am lost up here because I didn't have a plan because most I changed all of this this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let's go through a few scriptures here. <laughs> Let's go through a few scriptures. <clears throat> Romans chapter 3, verse 1 and verse 2. Why, why, why is it we need a restore, a restoration? Why is it we need a revival? Because church is a mess. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. No, no, that's why I'm so glad we grew up, David, on no more church as usual. Right. Now I know what we were saying. That's right. I know why God trained us that way now. Because we ain't never cared about usual church. And neither does the Most High. Mm -hmm. But why we need a revival? Why we need a restoration? Now, if you go to the book of Acts, the Bible said when Peter was preaching, he said, heaven going to retain Christ. The Bible said he, he's ascended and heaven will retain him. I want you to go look at that because I'm, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but this is exactly what it says in, in Acts, the book of Acts. Heaven going to retain Christ. He is not coming back. Heaven going to retain him until the restitution of all things. Come on. Everything got to be restored. The idea of the house of Israel got to be restored. The idea of what an ecclesia is got to be restored. Because when the Gentiles took the narrative, they perverted everything. Yes. And now there got to be a Hebrew movement. There got to be some true Israelites rising up again, realizing who they are. I'm not talking about these flaky Israelites. Because, like I said, anytime there's a real movement, there's a fake movement. Because some of these Israelites rising up, 
Still full of hate, still bitter as all get out, still cussing everybody out, still living like the devil. Those are not the ones God's going to use. In fact, they may be some of the ones that the Most High going to get from among us because he said I'm going to get the rebels from among us. Hallelujah. So we got to have a movement back to the original idea of what this book was about. And we so blessed to be taught what we taught. I'm blessed for the Father to teach me Hallelujah. and reveal this stuff to me. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. I'm glad I live long enough to understand what I now understand. So we got to have a revival, a restoration, and a restitution of all things. Because the Bible said heaven going to retain Christ until the restitution. I wish somebody could find that and read it for me. If you find it, tell me, let me know. Until the heavens go retain him until the restitution of all things. You got it? Oh, not yet. Okay, not yet. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, let, let me show you why we need a restoration to bring this whole thing back on course. And all those people that think Martin Luther is their father, go on and have your father. I'm going back to the true church fathers. The 12 apostles of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Apostle Paul. Uh, Apostle James, the Lord's brother, and Jude, the Lord's brother. I'm going back to those church fathers. Yeah. I'm going to follow them because the Bible said they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, not the church baby daddy's doctrine. Because mm. the church baby daddy's was the movement in Rome and the Protestant movement. I know a lot of black people don't like that because we have, we have lifted up Martin Luther so many years and didn't even know that he was a part of the prep, the perversion. Yeah, he came out with the message that just shall live by faith. Thank you for that. Okay? But you still hated us. And you still knew who we were. And you still helped enslave us. Hallelujah. Um, so, okay. go ahead. Didn't, they, didn't he and I know some other people say uh, that the, the Jews, I mean, this is probably one of the reasons they replaced the fathers, so that the Jews are bad. And right. Martin Luther, Martin Luther in his book, and I got some of his quotes. You can go study this all out there, you know. But yeah, Martin Luther, Martin Luther said some horrible things about the original Hebrew Israelites. Now, and when I say Hebrew Israelite, I am not talking about Hebrew camps. Okay. Or some of these Hebrew peoples out there said they know Messiah and still living like the devil. I'm talking about the original people who had it right with Messiah. Okay. But go ahead. Yeah, when you when you're talking about the original Hebrews, you're talking about the people of the Bible. The people of the Bible, which yeah, was the people apostles. of color. They were not white folks. I'm sorry. You're talking about the apostles. Yeah, and even when they came out of Egypt, the Bible said they came out a mixed multitude. You hear some people saying, "Well, yeah, okay, they, we understand y'all was the original Hebrews, but it said there was a mixed multitude." Go look at the seed line they mixed with. What? No Japhites in them. It was Hamites and Shemites. Mm -hmm. That was the mixed multitude. All of those folks were black. Mm -hmm. Glory God. Now black don't get you into heaven. That ain't what no. we're talking about. Right. But we got to go back and get the true history right. That's right. And so that's why it got to be a revival and a restitution of all the things because the stuff that got so perverted down through the years. Mm -hmm. Okay? Uh, did you find it, Tammy? Now watch this scripture here. I want y'all to watch this scripture because I want to show y'all I want to show you all that the time we live in is far more important than we know. So we don't want to get bored with this time because this time will anticipate. Read that scripture. Acts 321. Mm -hmm. Whom the heaven must back, back up so I can get a back up maybe a couple of scriptures. Acts 319. Okay. Repent ye therefore mm -hmm. and be converted. That your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. So, so before now, all of this is gonna happen before Christ return. Turn. It's gonna be a time of refreshing. Now, when you read Isaiah forty-four verse five, uh, verse one down to verse five, he was describing the times of refreshing when he began to pour water upon these dry plants in the midst of grass, and they're gonna start rising up, saying, "I'm Israel." That's the refreshing. That's the movement of the Most High to bring in Hebrews back to the position and take the keys back and begin to teach the world the truth about this book. 
And so, so now over here, Peter is talking about a refreshing. Come on. Because water refreshes you. And in Isaiah 45, it's talked about uh, uh, refreshing them with water. Come on. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you. But Jesus Christ don't come until that come of refreshing him first. And then he go ahead. Whom the heaven must receive uh -huh. until the times of restitution of all things. Oh, no, he can come at any time. He can't come until the restitution of all things when this stuff is restored back to its proper order. So it must be getting close because we're coming back to the truth. Amen. We, our eyes done come open to a lot of stuff that churches didn't tell us. Seminaries didn't tell us this. And so the time for the Messiah to return is close. I don't know the date and all the hour, but it's sure close because there's an awakening going on. Have I'm going to retain it until the restitution of all things. This we in the we in the stages of that restitution. Yes. Come on. Amen. Amen. That's why we learn it so much. Amen. Seeing stuff we ain't never saw before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, why do we need a restitution? Here's why. Look at Romans 3, verse 1. What advantage then has the Jews or the Israelites? These black people waking up, realizing that they took us from places and took our name, took our identity, split up our families, told us we was just slaves. They knew we was Israelites. Yep. They knew we was descendants of the house of Judah. Because yep. Judah was the one scattered to the four corners, not the ten tribes. Mm -hmm. Judah was scattered to the four corners of the earth. So nine times out of ten, the peoples in the diaspora, diaspora, mm -hmm. pronounce that for me. Diaspora. That's nine times out of ten, they are Judah. Because the scriptures prophesied that they would be scattered to the four corners. So they knew who we were and blinded us and lied to us because of our transgression, our ancestors who transgressed against the Most High. But the Bible said, what advantage then had these people? Watch this. Or what profit is there in circumcision or being an Israelite or being a descendant of the Bible, the ancient peoples of the Bible? What uh oh, what profit is there? Much every way. <laughs> and, 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 and some of our people thinking we're nothing. Mm -hmm. Some of our people ready to commit suicide because they've been told you're nothing and never will be nothing. No, you something. Amen. Amen. Come on. Bible said much in every way. Who are these people? These are valuable people that God is now waking up. Much in every way. Chiefly, here's why. Because under them was committed the oracles of God. These oracles were committed to Hebrews. These, let me say it like this. These oracles, see, because I got to rub that, uh, what they call that thing, the uh, Renaissance period. Yeah. Reading I preach so hard, I'm going to rub that back in their face. <laughs> in love. Hoping they repent. Yes. You painted it white. You painted the Hebrews white. You painted this Bible white, but this Bible now is coming back to the original uh, charge, the one who was given the charge, and he's bringing them back. Hallelujah. So, much in every way, chiefly because unto them was given the oracles of God. This is why I, I hear Pastor David say all the time, them people sitting over there in the Middle East, they ain't got no revelation. What revelation did they came out with? Yeah. They would have to study the Torah seven days a week, 24 hours a day, and don't know nothing. Mm. Anytime there's a move of God in the earth, God got to find a black man, a true Israelite. That's why William W. Seymour came out. Mm. And, and then the, the Bible, uh, not the Bible, but history tells us the power of God was poured out all over the planet on all people, white people, black people, Mexican people, everybody. What happened? The Gentiles rose up again. And, and, and William W. Seymour died poor. Because they, they rose up again, took the narrative again, but they ain't going to take it this time. Uh, We're going to take it back this time. Because the most high is with us. So it says, let's go somewhere else. Romans 9, verse uh, 1. Let me move a little fast here. I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. My conscience also bared me witness in the Holy Ghost that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. 
For I could wish that I myself was accused for Christ for my brethren, my blood, blood, my, my kinfolk, my people. Hallelujah. My, look at Paul, my kinsmen. Somebody said, well, this don't matter. It don't matter who's who. Yeah, here, here, you lying. This ain't what this book say. That's what you say. This stuff matters when you got it in the right perspective. He said, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, not the spirit. Spirit is important. But he ain't talking about no spirit. He's talking about kinsmanship, cousins and descendants. Mm -hmm. He said, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. Then he tell you who it is, who are Israelites. Mm -hmm. There's an Israelite movement in the earth in 2022. Yes. Now, don't get me wrong, some of it looks bad. Because some of them still cutting up. Yes. This is why Paul said, my heart desire and pray out to God, to Israel, that they might be saved. I really want them camps to get saved. Yes. I really want some of these Hebrew people to get the spirit, the real Ruach HaKadosh, the real Holy Ghost, the real Holy yes. Spirit, and you wouldn't be worried about this name up here on this, this wall. Yes. You wouldn't be worried about some hand I got on my head. You worried about all the other stuff that you ain't supposed to be worried about because you ain't never met him. You just woke up and found out who you are and now you think you know everything in the book. Sit down and let some elder teach you. I thank you, Father. I just saw God, Yah, bringing elders in the midst of this awakening. Real elders in the midst of this awakening. And the elders going to get this thing straight. Because there's a lot of us waking up, got big channels, big movements, but don't have big spirits of the Holy Ghost, of the Ruach HaKadosh. But there will be elders come on the scene that's going to help this movement of the Israelites. And it ain't going to look nothing like these camps and all the foolishness that's among this movement. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I, I'm not preaching to this house, I hope y'all know. I'm preaching to There's somebody hearing this. Yes. Somebody need this. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Okay, so it says, uh, verse Romans 9, verse 4. Who are Israelites? To whom pertaineth the adoption? Now, look, this is why we got to have a res restoration and a revival. Because these people, everything pertains to them that the Father going to do in the last days. It says, who are Israelites? To whom pertaineth the adoption? Ain't nobody else going to be adopted in God's family until God's family get right. Mm -hmm. Because the adoption pertained to them, the glory pertained to them, and the covenants pertain to them. And the giving of the law pertains to them. And the service of God pertains to them. And the promises. You've got to have a revival. You've got to have a restitution like the Bible said. To heaven going to hold Christ until the restitution of all things. Wow. We're in a restitution moment. Hallelujah. We're learning what we're learning. Glory to God. So, it says, uh, what verse did I stop on? Four. Four. Okay. Whose are the fathers? And to whom concerning the flesh Christ came? Who is over all God blessed forever. Amen. Not as though the word of God has taken no effect, for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. All of them ain't got it together. That's waking up. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham, are they the children. But in Isaac shall I seed be called. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. There's a lot of Israelites waking up, but they're still in the flesh. Hmm. These are not the ones that's going to push in the revival. Oh, it's going to be the children of the Spirit that's going to usher in the move of God again in the earth. But the children of the promise accounted for the seed. Galatians 6.15 For in Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. Uh, I want to know to I want to know to I want to I want to ask a question. All the Hebrews waking up in this awakening, have you been born again? Have you received the Spirit since you believed? Because if you receive the Spirit of Christ, I didn't have to go on the internet and some of these guys I see them, I just chime in on them. I say, brother, you preaching a holy word, cussing with every every word, you embarrassing God. 
Right. I, you know, and after I deal with them once or twice, I leave them alone because you don't got two witnesses now. You not representing the Most High God. The Bible said Israel, everywhere they went, they made him look crazy. And what he going to do in these last days, he ain't going to do because of us. He's going to do in spite of us. But there are some of us that got this thing right and got back in order with the Most High. And we're going to be the ones carrying this movement. Amen. Hallelujah. So, in Christ, neither circumcision relative to anything or uncircumcision. No matter if you're a Jew or a Gentile. Are you living right? Are you holy? Are you living what you're preaching? Hallelujah. Man, this ain't no teaching uh, Sabbath. This is a preaching Sabbath. <laughs> Romans 11 and 1. I say then, has God cast away his people? God forbid. All you evangelical churches, all you Protestant churches, do you think the Israelite movement has stopped? No. The end time will be a revival of Israelites. I say then, has God cast away his people? God forbid. Never shall it be. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not cast away his people, which he foreknew. He had a plan at the end time, right before Christ's return, that there's going to be a restitution of knowledge, a restitution of the teaching of the word, and a restitution of Israelites before Christ's return. Let me go to Romans 11. Verse, uh, I'm in 11, but let me look at verse 25. For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery. This was a whole mystery. It, it was a mystery. That you should not be ignorant of this mystery. At least you should be wise in your own conceit. That blindness in part had happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. How long have we been in this church world, in this evangelical world, in this Protestant world, how long have we been here not knowing we were Israel? We just woke up, many of us, within the last seven to ten years. Just now waking up because the system deceived us. Just now waking up. Glory to God. But the sleep was a mystery. All them years we went not knowing who we really were was a mystery. It was playing out. And what was the plan? They going to stay asleep? Till I let some of the Gentiles come in and really make it into the kingdom. But, the, but in the midst of bringing the Gentiles in, they're going to bring the Gentiles in. They're going to be a corrupt bunch of the Gentiles that are going to colonize the Bible. Oh, oh, oh. And they did. <laughs> they did. They took it over. Wow. And set up white supremacy. It's even in the nations. And it's in the churches. Hallelujah. But it was a mystery. God said, I'm going to put the Hebrews to sleep because of their forefathers and how they rejected Messiah. But he said, in this mystery, I'm going to let them stay asleep. They ain't going to know who they are until the time is right. And water going to start falling on them out of nowhere. Teaching is going to come out of nowhere. All of a sudden, it's going to, it ain't going to sound like the messages they've been hearing. Wow. Come on. And they're going to start waking up. But when they start waking up, guess who done went to sleep? The Gentiles done gone to sleep. The Gentiles done lost the anointing. Hallelujah. It says, so uh, I would, I would, for I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery. At least you should be wise in your own conceit. That blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And so all Israel shall be saved. As it is written, there shall Come out of Zion a deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Watch now, watch this verse, verse 27. Man, I, I was in this for years and ain't never understood this. It says, But this is my covenant with, uh, unto them, which I shall, when I shall take away their sin. This is my covenant unto them. I didn't know there was another covenant in the new covenant. They didn't tell us that. This is a covenant God got with his bloodline people. That I'm going to come and wake them out of their sleep. And that's going to be some ungodliness I'm going to have to turn away from them when I get here. Oh, I ain't never, I ain't, have you ever seen that? <laughs> they ain't want to tell us that. Yeah, that's some foolish stuff amongst us. Yes, but he's going to come and take us to the wilderness and deal with the foolishness. Amen. That's his covenant to us. He's going to get us straight. Amen. I, I don't know about you, I want to be straight when you get here. Amen. <laughs> 
Hallelujah. Let me hurry up so I can finish. All right. Uh, the covenant was made with Christ's bloodline people. Because I want to close with, ain't none, ain't, ain't none of you, ain't none of these nations going to get into the millennial kingdom if you don't get with this movement of the Messiah. I'm going to show it to you. He ain't going to let you in. I'm gonna, don't y'all don't let me forget the clothes there. Because I, I said somebody need this. But the covenant was made with the bloodline people, with Christ's family, with his kinsmen. Christ, the Redeemer, the Messiah, the one you claim you believe, his people. Hallelujah. The covenant was made with them. You can't even get in on the covenant unless you come through him and them. Everybody said him. Yeah, him. But if you mistreating them, you still ain't going. He said that. That's right. That's right. See, ain't nobody, ain't nobody been preaching like this. Everybody been preaching, oh, the Messiah, oh, the Messiah, oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Well, Jesus is going to say, get out of me. Get, get out of my face. I know you're not. Hmm. Many going to turn. He's going to turn away. Hmm. All right, Jeremiah 31, 31. And I ain't going to read all of this. Uh, Hebrews chapter 8. Starting at verse 8, Hebrews chapter 10, starting at verse 12, all the way down to verse 17. All of it say the covenant, the old covenant, and the new covenant was made with Judah and Israel. You don't find where he made no covenant with Gentiles. You don't find where he made no covenant with the Europeans. You don't find where he made no covenant with nobody but the house of Israel. And everybody that's going to be saved going to come into that covenant that he made with them. Ain't nobody else going to be saved. I know the church don't teach this because uh, Martin Luther and them taught their gospel. They didn't teach this. I'm trying to hurry up so I can come to a close here. All right. Let's go Acts 3.25 and 26. Now, if you go back to Acts 3.12, Peter talking to all Israel. This, this book is an Israel, Israelite book. Amen? Now, yeah, we go to all the nations, preach the gospel to every creature, but don't all you creatures, don't forget this is an Israelite book. Hallelujah. If you get in on the bread that the Messiah gave to the Israelite, you blessed. But don't eat so much bread till you go to your head. I like that. <laughs> And it done went to the head of many churches because they don't receive this type of teaching. And it's right in their Bible. Hallelujah. Ye are the children of the prophet. Who? The children of Israel. All the prophets was talking about Israel. You are the children of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, and in your seed, shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. And of course, that singular seed was talking about Christ. But Christ himself was an Israelite, came through the bloodline of the Israelites. And he's the savior of the world. But he, the savior of the world, going to judge people at the end how they treated his people. Hallelujah. All right. Let me do some skipping here. All right. For those that think that it's all about Jesus, and it doesn't matter how you treat his people. Now let me make this statement. It is all about Jesus. It is all about Yeshua. But Yeshua said, you don't get in his kingdom if you mistreat his people. So since it's all about Yeshua, you might ought to take that statement in consideration. He said, you will be cursed into everlasting fire if you treat my people wrong. Hallelujah. Let's read some scriptures and then I'm going to close. Hallelujah. Because I made this statement. Uh, no one will make it into the millennial kingdom of Christ if they mistreat, hate, reject, or curse Christ's people. No one. I'm going to show you. You're going to have to throw your Bible away if you don't believe this. No one. I don't care how much you say you love Jesus. If you hate his people, he got a place for you. All the, that's why he's coming back for the day of vengeance, the day of the Lord, to whoop the nations for what they did to his people. 
Somebody say he's coming back for sin. Yeah, he's going to deal with all sin everywhere. But the greatest sin that he's focusing on is what you did to these. All right, Genesis 27, verse 27. And he came near and kissed him and smelled uh, and smelled and the smell of his raiment and blessed him. Y'all know what this story is? This is Jacob. This is Jacob when, when Esau was supposed to get the blessing. Esau out hunting and his mama then hooked up a little bill to get Jacob the blessing. So Jacob go in there and he's smelling like Esau, feeling like Esau. So, Esau. so Jacob wound up getting the blessing. And it was prophesied when they was in the mother's womb. So it ain't like Jacob just stole it like they say, even though he kind of did pull a mickey, but he listened to his mama. Right. But the bottom line is the prophet, prophecy was he was supposed to get it. So, so that's what this story is talking about. And he came near and kissed him, and he smelled the smell of his raiment. This is uh, uh, Isaac smelling on uh, Jacob. And blessed him and said, watch what Isaac said to Jacob that uh, all of the Israelites inherited. Because see, whatever on Jacob comes on Jacob's seed. Right. Watch what he said. Hallelujah. And blessed him and said, See, the smell of my son is as the smell of the field which the Lord has blessed. Therefore, God Give thee the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn. Hallelujah. Now watch this. Verse 29. Let people serve you. We done serve everybody. Guess what? Everybody got to serve Jacob. Yes, All the nations got to serve us. Now I'm not preaching this from a camp perspective. I'm preaching this from a Bible perspective. Because this is what the Bible says. He said, let people serve thee and let nations bow down to thee. Watch this. Be Lord over your brethren and let your mother's son bow down to thee. Now, Jake, uh, Joseph was a pitcher of this because they sold Joseph into slavery and Joseph told him the dream that all of us I saw I had a dream and all oh, y'all had to bow to me. Joseph didn't know what that was about, but it came to pass they sold him into slavery and it came to pass where they all had to come to Egypt to eat and they had to bow down to Joseph. They sold us into transatlantic slave trade. But in the end all the nations gonna have to bow to you. I was thinking about that um, scripture that you read that said that they were going to think that they did this mm -hmm. to us. Right. You know, the Gentiles were eventually going to, you know, take pride in, in thinking that they did this to us. Mm -hmm. But I'm um, just, just looking at this scripture that you're reading right now of, of how our forefather blessed us, but because of our sin, mm -hmm. it turned backward on us. Right. And we paid for it. Mm -hmm. We paid for it. We did it to ourselves. I don't ever want to lose sight on that. Yeah, but I'm, I'm just looking at, you know, that they were supposed to bow down to us, but we ended up having to bow down. Right. Because of sin. Because of sin. But the but throughout all the scriptures, the prophets say, in the end, yeah. he's going to put it right back where, Jake, where Isaac said and yeah. blessed it. It's going to come back to what the, the blessed was is what yeah. I'm after. All the descendants of Jacob go inherit this blessing. Now, people may get mad at this, and people may not want to deal with this and say, well, we all are one in Christ. If we all are one in Christ, we all one in Christ. But when you read that Bible, God has never forsaken Israel, and there's still some things. And Israel will be the closest one to the Father and the rule closest to the Father than any nation. That's just a fact. Or you don't even believe the Scriptures. Uh -huh. so, so the promise was... Be Lord over your brethren, and thy mother's son shall bow to thee. Now watch this. This is the blessings upon Jacob, eventually upon Israel when he had his name changed, and the descendants of Israel. Cursed.
be someone. Everyone. Everyone. Anybody? Everyone. Cursed be everyone that cursed be. Anyone that cursed you and think they can receive Messiah and get in Messiah's kingdom is a violation of Scripture. Cursed be everyone that curses thee, and blessed be everyone that blessed thee. This is why he's coming back to make all the nations bow down to what they did when Israel was scattered into captivity. Mm -hmm. Israel was scattered into captivity for the sins of their forefathers and their own sin, but the prophecy still got to come full circle back around, and not everybody that did what they did to the descendants still got to pay. That's what the book say. Now, how often you hear this in the evangelical churches preach? How often you hear this in the in the uh, Protestant churches? How often you hear them preaching this? And it's sitting right there in the Bible. Genesis, here's another confirming verse when he was talking to Abraham. 12 verse 3. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curseth thee and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. In thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. God want to bless every nation on the planet. He want to bless Europeans. He want to bless Mexican. He want to bless China. He want to bless everybody. But he got a plan to those blessings. You can't get around his people and get his blessings. It don't work. You can't go take and do a parent's children wrong and want to be friends with the parent. Can't, it don't work. Let me show you a scripture. We don't want over this. Somebody need this, but not us. I think we know this. Matthew 25, verse 40 and 41. Now he said, the blessings upon the Israelites is, cursed be everyone that cursed thee. Let's look at an example in the gospel that Messiah himself taught where he cursed some people for what they did to his bloodline people and sent them into eternal flames because of it. Matthew 25, verse 40 and 41. And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as you've done it unto one, just one, if you mistreat one, one of the least of these, my followers, my uh -uh, brethren, because the followers are on his right hand. All the followers go on his right hand, and he's going to welcome them in the kingdom and say, what you did to my brother as you did to me. Welcome into the charge of the Lord. All his followers are on his right hand. All the, 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 the uh, gold is on his left hand. They standing out here on the right hand and left hand in his bloodline people right here. And he said, and the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as you've done it to one of the least of these, my brethren, not followers, uh -huh. not converts, not those who claim to be Christian. My, I'm talking about uh, these, my people, my bloodline, the ones I came through. What you did to my brethren, you did it unto me. Yep. Look at the next verse. Then shall he say also unto them on his left. Depart from me, you cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. And why did he send them into the everlasting fire? Why did he curse them? Because what you did to the least of these, you did that to me. Mm -hmm. So it goes back to this prophecy in Genesis chapter 27, 29. Cursed be everyone that curse you. And blessed be everyone that bless you. Do I want to ask... The Roman Catholic movement something. And I want to ask the Protestant churches something. I want to ask everyone that claim they believe in Messiah and believe in his word. Do y'all think he's kidding? <laughs> Do you think this is written just to be playing before the play with? Do you think this message is, is, is something you want to trash? Or should you look into this? There's a refreshing. He's restoring Israelites. To their proper place. And what you do to these people, you doing it to the most high. You had some? All right, let me just a couple more verses and I'm done. Zacharias 2 8. And I y'all, like I said, we don't want over all of this, but something he put this back on my spirit to teach it again. And I just have to go with the flow because maybe somebody will watch this time that didn't watch last time. Zechariah 2 verse 8. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, 
after the glory hath he sent me unto the nations. One day the Most High going to go to the nations and, and get all his people out of all the nations. It says, For thus saith the Lord of hosts, after the glory hath he sent me unto the nations which spoiled you. All the nations mistreated us. Still got us in these nations. We built America and they gave everybody reparation but us. That's all right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's in the hand of the Most High. It says, Have I the, the nations that spoil you. For he that touches you touches the apple of my eye. Wow. Everybody that touched you touched me. Question again. Do y'all think he playing? Mm -hmm. Do you think this is in the scripture for nothing? A couple more verses. Romans 11 verse 18. He's talking to the Gentiles here. The Gentile, and, and I believe a lot of Gentiles did get saved and become new creatures. And I believe we're going to see a lot of them in, in glory. Because some Hebrews don't want no uh, Europeans up there. Don't want them in the kingdom. <laughs> some of them Hebrews, the most I'm going to put out the kingdom too. But some of them made it. And some of them still may make it. But I think it's going to be rare because with the Hebrews waking up, the Gentiles going to sleep. But if you read this in context, he's talking to the Gentiles. And here's what he tells them. This is a warning. Romans 11, verse 18. Boast not against the natural branches. You better stop hating on these people. You better stop mistreating these people. Y'all done had the narrative for many, many years. And you bring us in your churches and you put one or two black people in. Don't give them no power at all because y'all got all the power. But you boast against us. You, you hate us. And many of them still hate us. And they still got systems that keep us down. But he said, don't boast against these people. He said, boast not against the, the branches. But if you boast, you don't bear them. They bear you. Look at Romans 11, 21. For God, for if God spared not the natural branches, if he didn't spare our butt, what make you think he gonna spare your butt? Oh <laughs> wow. For if God spared not the natural branches, take heed, Gentiles, least he also spare not you. Hmm. You think you're gonna get away? You think cause you in Christ that Christ never forgot about what you did to his people? Just like he put you in him, he can take you out of it. Hallelujah. Least he also spare not thee. Behold, therefore, the goodness and the severity of God. People ought to look at how severe God can be. I think many of us black folks know he can be severe. But everybody needs to know he, he is fair. And he can be severe when he makes judgments. So the Bible said, Behold, therefore, the goodness and the severity of God uh, on them which fail, talking about these original Hebrews that was given the covenants, the promise, the oracles of God, and that was given all the things to tell everybody else. He said, Behold, therefore, the goodness and the severity of God on them which fail and went to sleep. Severity. Look at how he severely dealt with them and let them win into slavery. Let beasts hate them and let people mistreat them. Look how, how severe he was with them. But towards you, Gentiles, Goodness. He showed you goodness. If you continue in that goodness. Some of them didn't continue because some of them was the one that helped to put us in slavery. Mm -hmm. The Roman Catholic Church was behind putting us in slavery. Yeah. The Jewish people over in Israel playing like they us on the ships that helped took us to slavery. Now you don't think he's going to pay that back if they don't repent? <laughs> it says uh, of goodness otherwise thou shalt also be cut off. He's telling you, this is a prophet saying he's going to cut them off. How do I know he's going to cut them off? Because the Hebrews waking up. When they wake up, they go to sleep. And while they're going to sleep, they're going to get severed just like us. Now, if there's a window open, you better hurry up and get in. You better stop tripping. You better stop hating. And you better stop trying to reject messages like this. Because Martin Luther didn't tell you this. Uh, uh, the Roman Catholic Church didn't tell you this. Most of the average church on Sunday and Wednesday or Sabbath, whatever day you meet, average church don't tell you this. But this is the truth. And what is the gospel? Repent and be baptized. Every one of you, Jew, Gentile, heathen, 
And the Bible tells us in Joel chapter 3, we're supposed to teach this and tell the Gentiles. It said, tell the Gentiles this. So that's why we got to teach it. That's why I read my disclaimer when I'm preaching stuff like this. <laughs> Amen. He said, tell the Gentiles, tell the Hebrews, tell them this. And then the Bible said, tell them, prepare for war. If you don't repent, you better prepare for war. Because the most high coming. Let's pray for them. Father, we thank you for Amen. all people, all souls. We don't hate nobody. Amen. And Father, I pray for the Hebrews that's waking up. We pray you would deal with the folly that's among us. There's a lot of wicked stuff still amongst us. Have mercy upon your people. Have mercy upon all of us as we wake up. We do know there's a covenant that you made with us that you're going to send a deliverer out of Zion and turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Come, Lord Jesus, help us. We need the help. But we employ and encourage our enemies to wake up before it's too late. We preach this message because it's in the message of the Bible. And we pray that if there's still a chance to snatch some of them out the fire, help us to do it. In the name of Yeshua, we pray. Father, thank you for the teaching of this word. We now know what's going on in this assembly and in every other assembly across the world. That there is an awakening. There is a revival. There is a refreshing. Because Christ cannot return until the restitution of all things. You are restored these oracles back to the Hebrews. Help us, Lord God, to deal uh, carefully with these oracles. Help us to live it in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen. You return your song. Glory to God. Father, we praise you. Oh, somebody ought to lift your hands and Lord, thank you. Thank you for refreshing me. 